I guess to start, just kind of how did the, the, the road win feel the first time this year for either of you? Uh, you know, uh, it's our first road win, and Coach been talking about let's get uh, our first road win. So, went to Cincinnati, uh, was locked in, and took care of business. Was the the plane ride home more fun after a win? Nah, is this the same? Christmas was crazy. Okay. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> who's who's the this this is going to be a great story. Who is the flyer that least wants to get on the plane? Doesn't really like being on the plane. Okay. He's looking straight at him. Yeah, him yeah. Y'all have to hold his hand sometimes? Uh, almost last night. He was sitting behind me, so uh, the plane started shaking. He was like, oh, like, it was like a, like a joke. I was asleep. He woke me up. So. He woke guess. you up, not the turbulence. Yeah, he woke me up. I, 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 flew, I flew so many times, so the turbulence was kind of like rocking me to sleep. But, <laughs> yeah, he, Something, one for each of you guys, for you. Literally, watching you play right now, you get better by the second. If you ever were in science class where they showed that time lapse of a flower, mm -hmm. you know, it takes, you know, however long to bloom, but it just blooms instantly. Mm -hmm. That's what it's like watching you right now. Do you get that feeling yourself that you're getting better almost every trip down the floor? Uh, I mean, I just been, you know, putting in extra work and going out there playing hard and the work paying off. I had a guest today on my radio show that's a former OSU Cowboy player back in the Sutton days. And he he's an Oklahoma City guy, so he can relate. He said, this next summer is gonna be key for you. That if you put the work in next summer, we may not recognize you by how good you are next season. Do you get that feeling that this is a crucial time for you to grow as a player? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, like you said, you know, uh, after we finish this year off strong, you know, me coming back, getting back in the lab, having a strong summer, then having the next season, you know, trying to get better and improve on the things that I can't like do right now. You, I want to ask you about two situations in last night's game. One, you were roughly at the top of the key. It was kind of getting a little, the shot clock was getting a little bit low mm -hmm. and you took off. You just drove to the basket. I think you ended up with a reverse layup. Mm -hmm. When you're in that position, what's going through your mind about what am I going to do here? Uh, I'm, I'm kind of just seeing what what the defense gives me. Uh, last night that they were a shot blocking team. I had went in there uh, two times before, and uh, it didn't it didn't end well. So uh, that that time was just uh, using the rim for protection. I think I know what Larry was talking about. Um, just using the rim for protection and, and hoping it falls. And then what were you thinking, too, when you guys fouled on that last possession? I think you were the one that got the rebound. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Because that's a huge execution situation. Mm -hmm. you got to get the board. If they get the board, it could end ugly. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, going into that free throw, uh, Coach, uh, Coach B, he just told me to, to – it was a guy outside, like outside of the three-point line. He just told me to stand by him. And I was confused at first. I'm gonna be honest with you. I was confused, but uh, after you know, after he shot the first free throw, it, it was clear that they were gonna try to miss the second one, and uh, that it was gonna they were gonna try to tip it out or you know do whatever they can to get those two. So uh, it just I was in the right right position to prove myself the point. Do you feel like there's been a couple of those scenarios this year with this being your guys' freshman season where a timeout and Mike's kind of explaining? <laughs> situations of the game to you that it's like, oh, like this is what's happening right now. Do, do you feel like that's that's happened on a few occasions this year? Oh yeah, most definitely. It's, it's, yeah, he's, he's definitely had to dumb a, dumb a few things down for me. Um, but uh, as we progress into the season, it, it's, everything is getting more clear. What have these last, I guess, week or so been like for you? Obviously you had your, your breakout game against BYU. Just kind of what has it been like from the outside, from the inside? What, what's it been like for you? Um, more or less, everything is the same. Uh, you know, the same, same work. Um, preparing for that, those last two games, um, they've been the same. Um, and just getting in, watching with my coaches, uh, having talks with with Coach B, having talks with, you know, all of our coaching staff. Um, no, I, I don't think I've changed anything uh, specific to, you know, everything's been the same. The work put in. From before those two games have been the same. 
one of the things, this is for both of you, and I, I noticed it last night, there were times, it looked like maybe with a, under the four minute mark in the first half, a little more about like midway through the second, you could see they, they would surge a little bit and you guys were tired. You only played mainly six guys. How, when you know that's the case, because you both have been on teams where the rotation was tight, how do you prepare yourself to play 30 plus, 35 plus minutes and, and also mentally say, look, I'm not tired? Uh, I would say like, the stuff you put in your body, like the food and then like, don't put nothing bad in your body, knowing like the minutes that you could play and as like, as you start getting tired, you can't like really think about it. You just got to push through and you know, play for your teammates. Yeah, to you back out that. Uh, I think the preparation that we take leading up to to the games, uh, I think they do a good job here of, you know, kind of managing our bodies throughout practice, even getting effective practice in and managing, you know, that the guys that's going to play, you know, 35, 36 minutes. Um, and I think they do a good job here of, of keeping it manageable. Brandon, you talked about diet that way. Is that something you learned since being here, or was that something you've been doing for a while? Uh, no, I used, to, I used to eat like crazy in high school, <laughs> but I learned like coming here, uh, like after a couple workouts, I was like, nah, I can't eat like this all the time. So after that, I just try to change my diet. I've been trying to eat like healthier and not eat a lot of junk foods and stuff like that. Is that Mrs. Boynton, who's, who's on you about that? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, Miss Boy. I go there often to talk to her about it a lot. So she helps me like uh, pick out meals. She'll sometimes meal prep for me and stuff like that. What's a what's a good like couple of days worth of meal? Like what do you, what do you eat on an average couple uh, of days? I'll say like some. I like spaghetti a lot. So, okay. Like spaghetti or like chicken and rice stuff like that. What's the fast food you hated giving up? Because that's what. It... Uh, I'll say wing stuff for sure. Yeah, that's my go-to. <laughs> What do you guys think was the difference in the last two minutes, you know, last night versus maybe some of those earlier Big 12 games? Um, I, that, that's tough. Um, I would say just we stayed together. Um, you know, when they, like I said, when they were making their runs, we, we didn't fold or we didn't point the finger at all. We, we just kind of stayed together and, and made a push back. I don't want to speak for you know earlier games, but I, I know that was the difference last night. I mean, watching that game like offensively last last night, it's like there's no turnovers. So you guys, I think, made just about all of your shots. Free throws are all going in. Mm -hmm. Is it is it a matter of having to maybe learn how to just succeed in those pressure situations late, Brandon? Uh, yeah, like he said, um, we've been struggling like closing games. So I, like I think like the past games, we we starting to figure out like how to close them and not like. Do like dumb stuff at the end to lose the game. So, yeah. You guys both were here after the BYU game and, and the post game got pressed a little bit. Is where that noise coach talked about <laughs> last night, where the noise. And uh, so we started asking questions beyond Cincinnati, beyond OU, for you two especially, like next season. Can you give yourself a few minutes every once in a while to think? If we do, if, if we hang, if, if Eric's around, if Connor gets a little better, if Javon stays with us, because he's kind of the older dude in this group. I mean, last night was a glimpse. And I'm not always the most complimentary guy. Last night was really good. Do you guys see where this could be almost a complete turnaround? Or do you even give yourself, it's just over you right now? Because that's the next thing. Uh, yeah, I would say um, I'm, we're just focusing on you know finish, closing the season out and and you know completing the job. I, I think once that time gets here, you know we'll have those talks or we'll have those those conversations. But uh, as of right now, I think we're just taking one game at a time. Brandon, do you even let yourself think about getting above 500 and maybe going to the to some sort of postseason beyond the Big 12? Because that looks like now it could happen. Uh, or, or again, is it just OU Saturday? Uh, yeah, like you said, I'm just focused on the next game. So, yeah. what do you think you learned from the first game against Oklahoma that you'll be able to use uh, Saturday? 
I learned a lot, like just how they was playing me and like, uh, like the different stuff they was running, like to get to get fouls at me early. I, I realized like what they was trying to do, so just trying to fix those things for this upcoming game Saturday. Jamar, how old were you when you moved to Texas? Uh, I was twenty fourteen, so what's that like? Eight or nine, somewhere around there. How impactful was that experience, or what, what, what was what were some of the challenges you faced? Because that was you, you were like left family behind out mm -hmm. in, in North Carolina and all that. I'm, because I'm thinking back to when you were talking about like your toughness and the things that you developed. I'm guessing that had to play a part in this. Oh yes, sir, most definitely. Um, you know, moving out there, uh, not really knowing anybody, you know, having to basically start over from uh, from ground zero um, taught me a lot of a lot of resiliency, a lot of resilience, and. Uh, just having to make those connections. Uh, I think I learned early, at an early age where connections, it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. Um, and that relationships were gonna play a, a big part in you know my success. So uh, going out there, like I said, having to start from ground zero, I think that, that kind of broke me out of my shell a little bit. And I'm guessing that's probably a, a point where you started noticing some of the stuff like you talked about with your mom. Mm -hmm. You know, her probably getting you to the gym early and then off to work and all those sorts of things. Is that kind of what it was like there? Oh, yeah. Um, it would be 5.30 mornings where she, I wake her up. Um, you know, she, she's getting me getting me there to the gym. She's back to catch a, you know, maybe a small nap and then she's right off to work. Um, so I think, you know, seeing that so many times, it's just like, okay, she's making a sacrifice. I, I, need, to, I, I need to get on top of my game. When you moved to Texas, were you always in the clean area? Yes, sir. But see, that's kind of tough people come from there. That's yeah. a tough area. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't mean in a bad way. I just no. mean most of the people I've known from Colleen, mm -hmm. pretty tough anyway. Oh, yeah. It's a uh, military. My, and yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, my high school, we, we we always had open gyms. So uh, it, all the all the alumni would come back and, and those were some pretty tough runs. So I would I would say pretty tough people come out of Killeen for sure. When did you quit playing football? Um, <coughs> eighth, eighth grade year. Um, it was kind of, I was kind of given an ultimatum. Um, but uh, sometimes I, I wish I, I would have stayed with it. Um, just at least throughout high school. Um, but I think I made the right decision. Whenever you committed, you, you talked to me about um, the coaches telling you, like, in a year or in a year and a half, we're going to need a point guard. Mm -hmm. And you kind of seemed okay with waiting throughout that process. What do you think, where do you think that patience came from? Because a lot of guys, they want to be told, I'm going to play instantly when I get here. Um, I, think, I think that kind of plays back to uh, me moving to Texas. Uh, when I moved to Texas, I, you know, I wasn't always um, – like the go-to guy on every team I played play for. Um, so it was just having those experiences early, uh, coming off the bench or, or not playing at all, like even, um, I think that taught me a little bit of patience, like, okay, your time can come. Like at any given moment, you need to be ready for your time or for your name to be called. And um, you know, that, that was kind of one of those situations. Is that a similar situation to Saturday, you feel? I think so, yes, sir. <laughs> Couple, couple more questions. One for Brandon. When, because it looks like maybe the rest of the way the starting lineup will be the four guard group with you as the one big. And last night, you were dealing with three bigs in that starting lineup for Cincy. How, how do you mentally get ready to say, okay, man, I'm gonna have to be the man in the paint. I'm gonna have to really get after it. Uh, that's just uh, starting off with scout from when we first started in film and coach telling me who I'm um, guarding. So just those two days out, I'm just thinking about my focus on who I'm guarding, how can I stop him, how can I help my team, and stuff like that. Has it been a challenge to go? You see so many different looks. Go To go from uh, you know what you had with BYU and what your role was there to what it was at Cincy, and then it's going to be different again for, for OU. Has that been... Kind of a unique challenge in all. Oh uh, yeah, I say it's a it's a challenge just because you know it's different type of big, so and you got to guard them all kind of certain ways. So I, I mean, I feel like I've been doing a good job of taking on the challenge. All right, 